Okay, this is a very interesting question, and it's, it's one of those that, that we, we don't see that often, okay? Um, we see it in a different variation, and so the answer is going to be the same as those variations. And this, you know, and keep, please keep in mind, if your child has an IEP, um, then they also enjoy the civil rights protections, uh, which is equal access, uh, that exists under Section 504, all right? And then there's always something called a reasonableness standard when you weigh what the requirements of a public school would be in providing those things, okay? And both of them speak to uh, your child's right to a free appropriate public education. 504 has the same legal standard. It's just the analysis is slightly varied because we're talking about equal access, not necessarily uh, specialized instruction, which is the only difference. I mean, it's a big difference, but it's the, the only real difference between 504 and, and uh, kids kids with an IEP uh, is that 504, all kids with an IEP enjoy a 504. The only difference is that they also get special education or specialized instruction, okay? They both enjoy the civil rights protection stuff. That's where they diverge is special education. So under, uh, let's say under an IEP, there's gonna be a section within the IEP that talks about non-academic and extracurricular activities, whether your child can participate in those. And if they can, what, uh, if any, additional supports or, or requirements need to be provided uh, in order for your child to be able to, per, to, to, to participate? That's that equal access uh, uh, part of it. And people tend to gloss over that part of the IEP, but it's federally mandated that it be in there. It's, it's, it's in every IEP. So for example, if you're in Alabama and, and you have your child profile section, and then that next page after your child, child profile section has uh, the special instructional factors at the top, the yes or no questions. You know, whether your child has behavior that impede their learning, whether they have communication needs, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, then you have the transportation section uh, in the middle. And then right below that, you have something called non-academic and extracurricular activities. And I can't tell you how many parents don't understand what that means. And so schools just check a box and parents don't think about it. Non-academic would be anywhere in the school that isn't in the classroom. It would be hallways, it would be cafeteria, it would be outside on the playground. It would be any non-academic area within the school. And then you have that secondary question, of extracurricular activities because your child has a right to participate in that. Equal access, they have to provide equal access. It doesn't mean necessarily that they make the cheerleading squad, but they've got to be given an opportunity uh, on, on uh, an equitable uh, footing with, uh, with let's say, able-bodied or, or, or neurotypical peers. You just can't guarantee the outcome but you can at least put everybody on the same sort of playing field using that reasonableness standard. So by saying that, apply it to your situation. Your child medically requires these things and you medically require an aide uh, or a nurse to be on campus or available. And would that apply to non-academic or extracurricular activities? Answer that in your own mind. Yes, yes, I think that's reasonable. Schools employ nurses, just like schools employ aides, just like schools employ teachers. And many of these professionals, if, if I have a student that requires aid support after school or, or to participate in extracurriculars, we've had aides out there. I have fought for aides and successfully received aides to support my students as they uh, participated in extracurricular activities and on field trips. That is reasonable. And if your child requires that medically, then yes, and schools employ nurses. Now, for example, let's say that uh, your child uh, requires the presence of a, uh, a nuclear physicist. Well, you see where that may be an argument to where it's unreasonable. Why do you need a nuclear physicist to travel with your child everywhere? 
but schools on a reasonableness standard employ nurses, need nurses. And if they do, then at that point, what is equal access for your child? And if your child has a 504, then it's a no brainer. But I brought up that within your child's IEP, it's going to ask that question, whether your child requires additional supports uh, and, and have those named and explained within your IEP in non-academic settings in an extracurricular settings. So non-academic would also include field trips. We've had nurses travel with my clients that are wheelchair bound, that have feeding tubes, trach tubes, you name it, to where they're able to participate on an equal footing with their peers on field trips. And nurses have needed to go. I hope that explained that. It's, it's quite simple, quite, if you really think about it and, and you just work through the argument, okay? And hopefully that works out for you. Mm -hmm.